After four days of deliberations, the verdict came down at around 1.30 this afternoon. Jurors awarded Southern Electronics and Active Solutions $18 million, which includes interest. Much of the case focused on crime camera technology developed by the plaintiffs, which they allege Dell, the city's former technology chief, Greg Meffert, and firms owned by a city vendor conspired to steal. A key component of the verdict was a $10 million award on claims that the defendants conspired to create unfair competition against the plaintiffs. Jurors assigned Meffert fault for 20% of that award and 43% of a $3.5 million award for damages caused by interfering with the plaintiff's contract with the city. Dell was assigned majority of the blame on that $10 million award. When companies my size come up with great ideas, especially ideas that are going to help the community, which was really one of the main things of why I was working as hard as I was working for this, security camera, safety, economic development for our town, Baton Rouge, why I invested all that money. You know, we can't allow the Dells, the Cybers to come in, see an idea, and then just do the things that they do through their corruption with politicians and all the other things that, that, that are in our case. I feel betrayed because uh, I put a lot of trust in a lot of people. I put trust in a city that I loved. I thought it was you know, working, we were working together to create something great. I feel betrayed by my partners who we were family friends, spent a lot of time together, uh, and they've acted like I had nothing to do with this thing. We put everything we had, I pretty much focused three, four years of my time, not working on other projects, working on this to help grow this thing. And um, you know, when the money stopped and we weren't being paid and then projects started going to uh, our defendants, uh, it, it pretty much wiped out my company. What makes me the most angriest is that three and a half years later after filing our lawsuit and the mounds of evidence that we have against all the defendants that myself and my lawyers are still trying to prove and try to get to trial uh, what's happened and my uh, two partners uh, I think their case lasted they were two three years uh, two and a half years went to trial we're here three and a half years later still trying to prove to people that we, we got screwed. Today, the Insider Exclusive goes behind the headlines in Louisiana's crime camera scandal, CamSoft Data Systems, and Carlo McDonald's story. To examine how Mark Sturbko, managing attorney of Sturbko Law Group, and Jason Melisaw, partner at Melisaw Rhymes, are pursuing justice on behalf of Carlo and his company. This tragic story involves Carlos' technology company, CamSoft Data Systems, which fell victim to an elaborate scheme to steal groundbreaking wireless technology for citywide surveillance camera installations in New Orleans. Carlo, a young and brilliant entrepreneur, developed public-private partnerships with local governments to build Wi-Fi infrastructures. In 2002, Carlo took the leading role in building wireless hot zones by successfully deploying one of the country's first citywide free Wi-Fi hot zone that used mesh technology in Baton Rouge. He continued to expand on the role of hot zones in cities and towns by merging wireless technology and application services. In 2003, Carlo and his two friends jointly collaborated to develop a wireless video surveillance system for New Orleans, Louisiana. The system was so promising that major corporations, including Dell and Cyber, struck secretive deals with city officials to take the technology and market it for themselves. The city officials in turn also struck secretive business deals with Carlo's so-called friends to gain access to the technology, leaving Carlo and his company out in the cold. A contract was awarded to a company called Net Methods, run by former New Orleans Chief Technology Officer Greg Mefford's friend Mark St. Pierre, 
who was also a close associate of New Orleans former mayor Ray Nagin. Meffert and St. Pierre have since been convicted of corruption and a host of other crimes in connection with the scandal. Dell was also involved in the deal working with Net Methods. No longer satisfied with their secretive arrangements, the city officials, Dell, and Cyber decided to take all the money for themselves. In 2005, when Hurricane Katrina devastated New Orleans, billions of dollars in federal money poured into the city. Through this elaborate scheme of bribery with public officials and kickback contracts and illegal no-bid sales, Dell, Cyber, and city officials sold tens of millions of dollars in wireless video surveillance systems across the United States, originally designed and deployed by Carlo and his company. The corruption expanded to include other cities such as Baton Rouge and Lafayette, Louisiana. Secretive deals were crafted where Carlo first introduced the technology and was quietly locked out in favor of officials with the Mayor's Office of Technology in New Orleans. Today, for the first time on national TV, Carlo McDonald and his lawyers Mark Sturbko and Jason Melisaw will give you the inside exclusive story to one of the largest public corruption cases in Louisiana history, involving at least four felony bribery convictions and large technology companies reaping tens of millions of dollars in sales while Carlo struggles in federal court to demand justice. Marks and Jason have earned the highest respect from citizens and lawyers alike as some of the best trial lawyers in Louisiana and in the nation. They are driven to fight for people who have been harmed by the willful or negligent actions of others. They learned a long time ago that if a man hasn't discovered something he will die for, he isn't fit to live. Mark's and Jason's amazing courtroom skills and headline-grabbing success rate continue to provide their clients with the results they need and the results they deserve. This is the Insider Exclusive, live from New Orleans, Louisiana. It is my great pleasure to introduce Marks and Jason to the show. Welcome to the show, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about your law firms, Jason. Sure. Our law firm primarily focuses on plaintiff personal injury cases. Mm -hmm. However, when the right case comes along where we feel there's been an injustice in the commercial sector, um, we will actively represent commercial entities as well. Right. So probably 80% of our firm is focused on personal injury. 20% is on commercial litigation. Now, your firm, Marks, is a little bit different, correct? Yeah, my firm has, does a lot of financial regulatory law, and we do a lot of financial uh, litigation and, and uh, fraud, fraud law. Today, we're going to be talking about a case that involves Carlo, your client, Carlo McDonald, and, and his company, CamSoft Data Systems. Correct. Um, before we get into the actual facts of the case, tell us a little bit about your client. Sure. Carla McDonald, I think, um, epitomizes what we all want to strive for as far as the American dream. As a young child, he was uh, very uh, intelligent, uh, very interested in computing technology, and began writing programs at a very young age, which while the rest of us were playing sports, uh, he was doing the Bill Gates thing and right. writing computer programs. And uh, he took that talent and opened a very successful company uh, in Baton Rouge. And over many years, he worked very hard to build his company up to 30 employees, which in Louisiana, you know, our metropolitan areas aren't as large as, say, Los Angeles and New York. And that's a fairly significant size company for our region. And, uh, you know, we represent Carlo now and his family as a result of he, he tried to do things the right way. Mm -hmm. Uh, people he was involved with went around his back and were doing things the wrong way and ultimately it cost he, his family, and his company direly. Um, as we will be discussing this technology, it is a wireless technology that was used for police surveillance cameras. And I'd like you to tell our audience, Marks, a little bit about the technology. We're going to be showing some diagrams as you explain this. What is it exactly? The technology is a... Uh, it's. It's a way for uh, governments to communicate, whether it be the police stations or emergency management, EMS type ambulances. Mm -hmm. And it, it 
it's almost like a grid system that uh, it's out in the street out cameras in the street. correct and they, and there's there's wireless nodes so everything can kind of connect and mm -hmm. uh, is a let's say a, a car is going through you'll have a, maybe a wireless camera that can see that car and there's applications that are developed that you can develop through those uh, uh, the, the the camera aspect of it it's primarily used initially as a surveillance kind of a thing to help the police, to help law enforcement, correct? Well, I think that's one aspect of it. Yeah. Overall, it's, it's an, an entire, it's a mass communications network that governments can use in case that there's a national disaster or a uh, war and let's say like the uh, phone lines go down or something along those yeah. lines. Now, this case is all about three partners who got together and said, let's contribute our own technology, let's contribute what we know to make this work, make a proposal. Carlo had a unique uh, ability of forging relationships with municipalities and the private sectors to uh, develop and implement systems like this. What went wrong here? He's a trusting guy. Mm -hmm. He's a guy that uh, a handshake is, is, is his word and he, you know, yeah, he, he's, he's an honest guy. He's not a guy that, that's even thinking that somebody's going to take advantage of. So his two partners basically went and made deals behind his back, stealing his technology, right? And they made deals with the city, correct? Sure. Essentially what happened was there were individuals within the city of New Orleans who were friends, who had a private technology company, and they were the friend of the public official. And that public official was Greg Meffert? Correct. And the private, first, uh, private individual was Mark St. Pierre, correct? Correct. And the other owners of a company initially called Imagine Software. Right. And these two people have been convicted, have taken, one took a plea and the other one has been convicted in federal court for bribery and corruption and all these other sort of things. In fact, Mark St. Pierre, you told me, was sentenced to 17 years and is in federal prison right now, right? Correct. That's correct. Okay, so basically they stole the technology from the two guys who stole it from your client, correct? Well, I think it's important to understand the financial incentives of mm -hmm. what were going on. They were building relationships with large IT companies such as Dell and Cyber Inc., multi-billion right. dollar a year companies. Mm -hmm. Carlo and his partners had deployed this wireless crime camera system around a housing project, high crime, right. in New Orleans. Uh, these technology companies realized that this was gonna, going to be a major potential source of revenue following 9-11 uh, and all the federal dollars that were coming in for Homeland Security. Yeah. And actually it was those two companies that actually prodded the public officials to go ahead and, t and use their access to the system to gain access to the technology. And they cut out Carlos' two partners too, correct? Eventually, over, yeah. a, over a long series of words, events. In other words, there's an old saying, there's no honor amongst thieves. That's correct. Right, that's and that's what you have here. This case epitomizes yeah. there is no honor among thieves. Now, it's interesting. One of the, the public official, Greg Meffert, who has taken a plea deal, admitted he was, he, he was charged with corruption, taking bribes, and he is yet to be sentenced, right? Correct. He gave an affidavit, but in essence, Marx, tell us what his affidavit said. Greg's affidavit basically described that they stole Carlos' technology. Yeah, and he was the chief technology officer for the city of New Orleans, right? Correct, it, and, and a self-proclaimed deputy mayor under Mayor Ray Nagin mm -hmm. after uh, Katrina. Now, your case currently is pending in federal court, correct? What are some of the challenges that you have to pursue, and what are the, and let me ask you this question, Jason, what are the causes of action? What are you suing on the grounds of what? Well, primarily as it relates to Carlos, what we contend his uh, business partners, yeah. that there was an agreement between them and they have admitted to, to this uh, verbal contract to keep all of these pl plans and designs for this system confidential. Yeah. And they violated that they agreement. It. They stole it. And you mentioned to me that in the depositions there have been, they, that Carlo has been mentioned more than 2,500 times? When we initially inter in, intervened in the civil case in New Orleans, yeah. which was the first case, yeah. uh, uh, every, the Dell, Cyber, all the defendants have, and plaintiffs said, oh, we, we've never heard of Carlo McDonald. And, yeah. uh, but by 10 minutes later, they came back, well, you've heard of Carlo McDonald because he's been mentioned over 2,500 times just in the documents. Right. Um, so we, you are currently awaiting trial, is that correct? That's correct. correct. How do things look? They, 
from the documentation that we've uncovered and from the witnesses uh, statements that we have obtained, we we expect a very favorable outcome. What else do you want to say about the case I would, to, I would, a, to the country? I would say this case, uh, factually, with the evidence that we have, I've never seen a more home run of, of, of a case where somebody has been a victim. Right. We have Carlo with us today, so let's bring him on right now so he can tell us his personal ordeal. It is my privilege to introduce Carlo McDonald. Welcome to the show, Carlo. Glad to be here. Boy, you are still going through a crisis here, aren't you? Just a little bit. Yeah. Tell our audience a little bit about your technology that you developed. It was innovative, right? Absolutely. Tell our audience what it is in a nutshell. Around 2001, late, early 2002, um, we saw something called a... Uh, a coffee hot shop, um, a hot spot where you could go in and you know get on get on the internet. Very very few places in the world had it. Um, I thought, what if we could just get connected to the internet anywhere you stand? And uh, I found a uh, manufacturer that was just starting to build some technology that would allow that, but they didn't know how to use the equipment either. So we we worked directly with them and we started building what we called hot zones or Wi-Fi wireless connectivity anywhere in a city where you stand, mm -hmm. which today seems a little strange because we all have that now with smartphones, but in the early 2000s, that wasn't available. Internet speeds on a BlackBerry were 3,000 times slower than what we have today. Mm -hmm. So the concept was to uh, work with cities and towns um, and try to help them from an economic development standpoint as yeah. well as public safety. So you went into the mayor of proposal and said, I can do this for you. And one of the things, one of the applications you could use was police surveillance, which every city needs, okay? Now, why did you need your two other partners who betrayed you, by the way? Absolutely. Um, why couldn't well, you go in there yourself and do this? They, they, had, uh, they had worked, um, they had approached me about this camera uh, that they were working on. And um, so you had the wireless technology, they had the camera. Absolutely. Okay. And, um, I worked with them on, you know, once we got together, we worked together on, on fine-tuning things. Right. Uh, it didn't work right out the chute. We had a pilot program that we spent many days and hours and months, a couple months, working and testing and fine-tuning, feeding that information back to the manufacturers, including Sony, uh, telling them what worked, what didn't work. And the results of that is the things that we see today. Yeah, so you were telling Sony, the manufacturer of the camera, we need to change or improve things in the camera so it can adapt to the wireless technology that we're trying to use. Right? Absolutely. One of the first things we saw was that night vision wasn't working really well on that camera. Yeah. Uh, my partners and I reached out to Sony, let them know yeah. uh, that issue, and they changed the whole manufacturing yeah. of that camera. Why and when did your partners betray you? Well, I've learned how a lot. Did you, how did you not know about this, by the way? about them betraying you, making deals behind your back with the city. I'm a technology person. Yeah. I focused on that. Uh, you know, we all had parts in this process. Um, Iggy Perrin had a part of working on putting together the RFP. While they were working on that, I'd spend my time and my team would work on the field in designing and, and, and changing and fine tuning the technology. So I was really focused on that. That's what I've done my whole life. So they would basically report back to you about how relationships were going with the city. Right. And would, you believed them. Absolutely. When did you first find out they screwed you? Probably when it was getting closer to their trial. Things were coming out in the press yeah. that I just didn't have any concept of or didn't know about and um, well, let me ask you that a question. when it started when the cameras were initially deployed there had to be money coming into the partnership that you had were you getting some of that money yeah that was in you'll in some of the emails you'll see where we were kind of arguing a little bit about that but uh, arguing about how much money you should be getting. yeah because there because it was such a new concept it wasn't a, a straight um, you know for every camera we put in the city would pay X amount of dollars yeah. Uh, there's a lot of site server. Uh, if you're familiar with wireless technology, there's a lot out there. So there's interference. And yeah. so there's, there was never really a simple, here's the price for one camera to deploy. Right. So we had some pricing of that. They had some pricing of that. And we shared in those costs. Um, some of the emails will show where they weren't paying me. 
And mm. uh, that was starting the frustration for me is that I had to pay my people and I couldn't do it. When, we were out here all the time. When did you first find out that the city was basically going behind your partner's back to make deals with Cyber and Dell? Probably during their trial and all of that you started coming out. You didn't know any of this? I, I, I didn't know that they were you doing all that. You didn't know the extent of the fraud? Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. um, we're on national TV today. What do you? What is your opinion of some of the actions that Dell and Cyber took against you? It's frustrating. Um, there's a lot of smart technical people out there, and they yeah. start their they start their companies up, and they come up with these designs and the things they do. And companies like Dell and Cyber yeah. quickly swoop in when they see money, yeah. and they grab that technology and they take it from you. Yeah. And the little guy gets hurt all the time, and so. I mean, that's a big part of what, what we're, we're fighting here. Right. Um, so you know, they, they could have approached me. They didn't. They could have talked to us. They didn't. They saw money, and they manipulated, as you, can, you, know, as you see in the case, all, a lot of different types of people. And Again, what we're, they on, wanted. we're on national TV. What do you have to say to your former partners that betrayed you? It's pretty disappointing. We were very close friends. Uh, we helped uh, build a lot of entrepreneurship organizations here in Louisiana together. We were both presidents of those organizations. Yeah. Um, we talked all the time. We were excited about what we were doing. Yeah. You know, we thought it'd make a difference, and it has made a difference from security and, and all yeah. those things that go along. I, I'm just upset that they've just totally acted and ignored uh, that I was a major part of that solution. Yeah. And they, you know, they've, they talked to us either in depositions and still claim that it had nothing to do with it. It's ridiculous. Well, I want to thank you very much for taking your time to be on the show, and Appreciate I wish it. you much success with your case coming up. Thank you. Thank you. What an amazing client you have. We certainly wish that you have success with your case. What does everything hinge on, basically? It just hinges on us getting to trial and telling our story. Yeah. Um, I think the more affidavits you have, the more verification you have, uh, the better success you'll have with this case. Because this technology is used all over the country now, isn't it? All That's over correct. the world. All yeah. over the world. China, uh, Saudi Arabia. Yeah. One of the reasons we want to do this show in the first place, it, it's, it's the underdog thing again. You know, we have a little guy, like Carlos said, a little individual, an entrepreneur, and a major corporation just step on him. And it takes lawyers like yourselves to fight for justice, and we are so glad that you're doing that. And we're very glad that you came here today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. You can get more information about our guest and the issues at InsiderExclusive.com.